are back, Sacktown 5. This is behind the scenes and I've got my beautiful crew here once again and we're gonna dive right into the propositions. First off, we're gonna be talking about Proposition 1 and that is with Rob Fong. Tell us a little bit about it and what, what's the status of it all? So Proposition 1, the legislature put this on the ballot. Uh, it's uh, asking to borrow $4 billion with bonds to pay for uh, housing for veterans, for low-income folks, for the homeless, for farm workers. So it's a, it's a big, big homeless play um, with affordable housing. Okay, so we've got a little bit of, of uh, homeless, mental health, we've got rent control, all that on the ballot this time. And veterans. And veterans, yeah, big right. time. Yeah. So what is that looking like? I mean, is it one of the hot ones on the on the ballot or is this something that looks like it's going to actually pass? You know, I, I think that when you look at one and Dan's going to talk about two, but you know, I think there's a big recognition that uh, homelessness, uh, the lack of affordable housing is a big, big deal that's growing worse right. in this state. And right. I think um, these are they're Especially trying, for trying vets. to take care of that. Veterans, yeah. you know, they serve our country. Right and we got to take care of them. I mean, homeless issue has been a big one here in California alone. Um, over the past two years, we've had over 16% in just growth in homelessness. So it's, a, it's definitely a hot topic and hence why it's housing, on the ballot. Housing, housing, housing. Diving right into Proposition 2, which is you know related to the whole thing, what's that all about and what does it look like? So Prop 2 basically, I don't know if you guys remember years ago, but there was an initial called Prop 63, which our mayor, um, authored, where it securitized basically a 1% tax, where we have $2 billion now in funds. And what Prop 2 does basically is it allows us to implement a strategy which is called Housing First, where you can you can take that money and securitize loans to build housing. The theory is, is that in order to cure homelessness and mental health, you have to house them first. So you build the housing, you build the um, infrastructure within the housing, and then you have the services and you have um, the help. And Prop 2 is, is apple pie. It's basically an opportunity, not a new tax, I might add, to build the housing we need for those people. And the housing. reason it's actually on the ballot, because 63 obviously already passed, it's yeah. been something in, in, in tax for a while. The reason it's on the ballot is because it has to do with what? It's a tax that now is being... It's not a tax. What That's happened right. was uh, Senator Kevin DeLeon, the right. former president pro tem of the Senate, who's running for U.S. Senate, um, put a, had a bill and he was sued saying you can't do that. And so the opponents have said you have to go to the ballot if you're going to securitize it. So yeah, if, it's on the ballot. You, and a lot of Republicans support this idea. Yeah. The tax increase happened right. with Prop 63, which Republicans probably oppose. Right. But now that you've got this revenue, a lot of Republicans agree it's good to use the revenue for this, leverage it for this purpose, so you can securitize and actually build some housing. So it's called wraparound services, which you're, where in the old days you'd get your services in five different places. Now it's where you are, you get your mental health, you get your drug addiction, you get your housing, and what this does is basically allows us to build the housing. So no fiscal impacts in, when it comes to additional costs? No, addi no additional right. costs. There's, right. some, there's some risk with the securities. It, well, there's risk with the bonds, but if you secure it with this revenue source, it, it should work well. It's a growing revenue source. There's $2 right. billion dollars in it now, and these services are necessary, and I think it's a bipartisan um, issue. Yeah. On that same note, we've got Proposition 5, and that's another one that Patrick's going to explain. Well, I know that um, you think of me when you think of our <laughs> older California over, citizens. Baby. 55 In and fact, over. my liver is probably at about 55 years old at this point. But <laughs> Can we touch My colonial it? hair. That's right. Uh, actually, what Prop 5 does, and hey, you guys should pay attention because yes. you're, hey, you're getting close to the stage. He's calling you out. He's calling you out. Prop 5 removes certain transfer requirements for homeowners over the age of 55. It also removes those transfer requirements for severely disabled homeowners and contaminated or disaster destroyed property. Some of the pushback on this though, Katrina, is that the fiscal impact, it will see schools and local governments each losing over a hundred million dollars in avenue in annual revenue. Um, and that grows to about a billion per year after the first few years. So there's a lot of folks out there saying no, no right. on Prop 5. And does that look like what the take on the Republican Democrat side would it would Well, it, I mean the, look, the, ar <clears throat> the argument for it is that you have people that are in older gentrified neighborhoods. They, they bought their homes a long time ago. They may own their homes outright. They can't afford to move or downsize in their retirement years because right. they lose that Prop 13 protection. So this allows them to make it portable, which theoretically can open up some, some housing. 
in these uh, in gentrified areas for, for families. So it keeps the market moving. The other thing about revenue loss, understand that that may or may not be true, but that, that all has to do with property prices. So we all kind of agree that things are too expensive. And yes, as a consequence, when homes get cheaper, property tax values come down and governments will lose a little bit of money. Well, the opposing side is complaining and saying that it's not necessarily creating new housing. And that's one of the no. issues that well, it's it doesn't, all we're having. The realtors yeah. have put this on the ballot. Right. They're so confident that they yep. put it in the ballot in 2020 also. And a lot of the allies on, on my side of the aisle are really trying to knock this thing out of the park. Right. So when we beat it in 18, they won't even go back in 20.